Hey campers, George here, back in the man cave. Today was a decision day. Didn't need the dice. Why? I wanted to check out this guy, the El Baraka. Whew. Let's check it out. So what I'm talking about here is this guy. Now, if you look at it, it just looks like a piece of folded steel and a blade. Kind of familiar, isn't it? The Japanese have the same style. I did this one before. I'll, I'll put a link below if you never saw it. And you look at these two knives, they, the manufacturing way they manufacture is similar. Some differences though. This one is the Higonokami, Japan. This one, the El Baraka, probably more well known as the Duk Duk from France. Yeah, this has got some history. So let's look at the history first. So here it is here. And this is the Duk Duk knife. And uh, this is the El Baraka, which is part of a series of knives made by a company called Cognate House or Cognate Manufacturing in France. I believe the town is theirs. I don't know if that's correct pronunciation, but in English it spells theirs. Very popular town in France for knife making and a lot of manufacturing of, of uh, utensils, tools, knives, you name it. And they were out there and they came out with the Duk Duk series, which is probably more well known than El Baraka. The El Baraka is a series of the Duk Duk and they have a couple of different ones. Uh, they all look just like this. The difference is what is on the handle and what the blade has on it and things like that and different steels and that sort of thing. But more commonly known, like I said, as the Duk Duk. And the Cognet company, back in about 1929, were really struggling and they needed to come up with something that could put them back on the map. Say hello to Mary. Yeah, she's still here. I was reading about it and that company, that they were struggling. It was back in 1929 and they came up with this design. A very basic, easy to make, simple knife. And it put them back on the map. Back then, there were a lot of French colonies, certainly in Africa, North Africa area. And it became extremely popular, popular in the colonies. And it, it really boosted them. And of course, eventually spread because of, of its popularity in the colonies. Very simple knife, has quite a history. The, the different series all have a reason for it. It's typically whatever the series is, is designed for a specific colony area. And what they did was on the handle, they would put a stamp of, a, of some sort of design which was well known in a particular area or colony. It just was so popular. Look at this thing. It's so thin. It's light. Basic construction. Basically, they folded metal over, a bale on it, kept it thin, folded it over. I had a blade, a, a, actually a very good blade, folded this metal around there to make the handle, put a bale on it, and had the, the, the blade in it. And I'll show you the blade. But it, it was so simple. It, you know, I said they just folded the metal over. It's actually a slip joint. That's the big difference between this and the Higa no Kami, uh, besides the blade shape and that sort of thing. But the, the way the knife was, uh, the Higa no Kami is just a friction folder. This is a slip joint. It actually has a joint in it. You can see it's got a half stop and it clicks closed. That's it. That's all they did with this. And they had that same style. Interesting, I, when I was looking them up and, and trying to find more about them, they had a video of one of their factories where they make the El Baraka. Talk about old school, small little hole in the wall place. Well, not small, little, but there's like five people that work there and they make these things. And it was interesting watching them do it. Very old school. The steels they use, very good. We'll get into the, the specs on this, but an interesting knife. You know, I, I, I got to this knife because I was back on that traditional knives of the world type thing. Traditional old schools, knives with a bit of history that have been around a while. And this guy came up and it's starting, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm starting to see a familiar style. 
this folded metal and a blade in it, Japanese. Did. You know, back then it was an inexpensive way to mass produce a knife that was pretty good. And this worked for uh, Cognate and uh, they had put them on the map. They're well known now, very well known. And if you go to their website, I'll put a link below for you to go and have a look. They have those different series. They've got the Tiki, the Squirrel, the Albaraka. And, and basically, like I said, if you look at this, this one has that symbol on it. It says Albaraka. Let me show you that. Underneath that symbol, can you see that? And then it says a model depode. I don't know what that means. My French, not that great. It is made in France. You know, like I said, I, I looked at the, the video from their website and that was very interesting to see how they mass produce them. It's actually by hand. <laughs> That's the scary point. Very distinctive. It, like I said, it's very well known, pretty popular worldwide now. It's well known. You can see it has that kind of clip on it with saber clip, I want to say. And it has this little indent here. When I first looked on there and I saw a lot of these knives out there on Amazon, just in general on the internet, they all, the picture showed that on all of them. Now, this here on the blade, and it, you can see there it says Duk Duk on it. I assume I'm pronouncing it right. That's, if I'm not, apologies. Foreign app. On the Albaraca series, they always showed it this way with nothing on the blade. And they kept showing it, kept showing it. I literally, I don't know if it's the same picture that everybody's using, but it doesn't show this on it. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of this on a blade. To me, it seems pointless. Uh, you know, you scratch up the blade, you, you sharpen it, you strop in it, you do all sorts of things and you're using it. And to me, having a pattern on the blade just, it worked for them though. All their knives have this on it. The reason I bought this one was because on all the pictures I looked at, it didn't have it. And I said, that's the one I wanted. <laughs> What do you do? Um, so there you go, the duk duk. And if you look at it, you know, you've got this blade. It has that uh, clip, saber clip. It has this little dip in it, which makes it a little bit more distinctive than a regular saber, which would have, that, you know, a, a curve up to there and then the coming up to that almost trailing point type style of clip point. It's a yeah, saber style, they call it, you know, just a flat grind. It has the pivot point pin on it here and a pin on the back and they have this bail. Inside they have the slip joint. If you look in the back here, here you can see how they did the slip joint is right there. You can see it early. So when I first got it, I thought it was just a friction folder, but then when I opened it, I realized oh, it's a slip joint. It's not that heavy and it's extremely thin. And for those of you who know my channel and see my videos, three things I hate. Heavy, bulky things in my pocket. I can barely carry car keys. When I got the uh, Higanakami, I was not only impressed with the blade, probably the best blade I've seen and used from the manufacturer, was how thin the style of knife is. I dropped it in my pocket and walked around all day. Didn't feel it at all. The only difference I'm seeing here is that the Higa does not have a bail on it. I have not carried this at all. I just got it, to be honest. I just got it, so I thought I'd show it to you. I'm really liking this idea. Unfortunately, you know me, I like to play with my knives. I, I've got into now modifying knives. There's not much you can do with this besides take the blade out and put it in another handle. Now, the blade is not one of my favorite styles. I'm not a clip person, but it's a little unusual. It's, it's not your usual saber clip, whatever you want to call it, style, you know, because it has that, that odd indent in it. But it works fine. It makes it recognizable. Marketing, you know that. You want to be a little bit different. The edge here is pretty sharp, so if necessary, you could probably strike with it. You'd have to be very careful because it doesn't lock. It's just a slip joint and pushing down that blade might flick up. Mm. Let's have a look at the specs and I'll tell you exactly what everything's made of. So first of all, here it is here. In, and like I said, it has a bail. It ha it's a slip joint. It has that saber style blade and just pivots. 
So let's see what it is closed. Now, keep in mind that this is the El Baraka series. Now, the Al Baraka series, I believe the squirrel belongs to that as well. The, the difference is, is that this little picture here will show a squirrel. Huh. And that's what's so, you know, I, I almost want to say probably more well known is the Tiki, T-I-K-I. Uh, which is the Melania, Melanesia, Melanesia colonies, excuse me, my pronunciation and history and memory is not what it used to be, was where it is. And the Tiki was a very powerful god from that area. And they named it the Tiki. This is the Al Baraka from more in the North Africa colonies. Let's get some measurements. Like. So we have a bale. I'm going to push the bale down. on me. No surprise there. Three and a half inches closed. The blade actually sits dead straight in there. If you can see that, I don't, it's right down the middle. Well, um, open, it is six and a quarter inches open like that. The blade from the tip to the handle is three inches exactly. It has, you know, like I said, it has the saber, the saber style clip on it. It has this little dip. It has a nice, it's a very sharp, nice curve on it. And it has the ricasso, it's a pretty uh, obvious ricasso. And you have your choil spine here. Like I said, it does have some nice 90s on it. It's not sharp, sharp, but I'm sure it would do something with it. And a flat grind. The, uh, the blade steel on this is carbon. It is a carbon steel, which makes it nice and easy to sharpen. How sharp is it? Let's... Let's just slice some with it. I mean, it cuts. This is straight from the factory. I haven't done anything to it. So uh, I wonder if I strop it, if we get a cleaner cut. The cut's not quite clean, but that's a strop will fix that. So it, it comes sharp more than you need, which reminds me, it got a reputation in the North Colonies, a bad reputation. All the bad dudes out there carry these very easy to hide, put in your pocket, you don't notice it became very popular during the unrest in the colonies and things like that. So not all good publicity, but what do you do? And then, like I said, on the blade, it has that pattern. Now, this pattern is common to all of them, and you can see it says Duk Duk on it. So if you want to look up their knives, you just type in Duk Duk, D-O-U-K, twice, and you'll get the whole series. And like I said, I'll put a link to the factory website so you can have a look at the different series well made you know it's simple the bend in it is a little it isn't perfect you can see that it does swell in the middle but that seems to be common through everything on this style of knife it's it sits in your hand just fine not something i'd want to use long term for a long term project because i feel that this uh, bulger kind of it's into my fingers there but it will do EDC style jobs, nice and simple. But I feel, I, I think I'm getting to the point of the older I get, the simpler I want it. <laughs> uh, what do you do? I try to find out what steel it was. They don't, they, they say silver plated. And they say the reason is, is that it gives it a nice finish. It looks nicer. Um, they just say a silver finish. I, I, I would be, I would think that, stainless with silver such a simple design and to put that company back on track they were in trouble at one point now let's get into their series so that's the basics of the knife and you can see the symbol there which stands for the el baraka and what baraka is i believe it's arabic or something like that it is a blessing basically uh the belief is that all objects have a baraka, a blessing within them that would help you and things like that. So that's where that name comes from. So I would assume uh, Muslim, something like that. Don't quote me, but I'm assuming North Africa, probably a lot of that. Uh, um, I believe it is Arabic, the Al Baraka. And like I said, they have a number of different series. They have the tiki, they have this, and there's some other ones. Interesting knife. The weight of this thing is 0 0.08 <laughs> pounds. Figure that out in ounces. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's very light. And like I said, thin, folds small. A perfect little EDC to carry in your pocket. That's not going to be obvious. 
How much did I pay for this guy? Well, that much. A little bit more expensive than the other guys. Uh, this is right on my bubble, and it was one of the more or less expensive ones. The other one's a couple of dollars more, I think, and it depends on what you want, just like any manufacturer. I got it, you know, it was really on the bob on the bubble for me for a folding knife. But I, I'm, I'm, like I said, you know, I get sidetracked into uh, looking at interesting knives around the world, just the history, and, and if, it has, if it has a history, I want to look at it and read up about it. I thought I'd pass that all on to you. I I'd literally touched on the history. It's got a lot of different history, some good, some not so good. <laughs> what it was used for, where it became popular, and why. Interesting. This, the Al Baraka series, was, I think on the website it said it was uh, targeting the Islamic colonies. Once they have quite a few different series. They all look similar. The only main difference is what's on the handle. This is the Al Baraka, so it has that symbol. The tiki has a tiki symbol. Uh, the squirrel has a squirrel on it. You know, things like that. Very interesting, pretty easy way to come up with different series. And, and you know what people are like to collect things. And, you know, here's a, a duk duk. Which one is it? Pretty good marketing and not a huge thing for them to change in order to produce. So I was surprised at the price. It kind of surprised me. I now own it. I made a decision. And here I am showing it to you. What can I say? Don't forget, like, share, subscribe. <laughs> you know the story. Pretty sure I'll be back again. I've had uh, a lot of good days for decision making. I haven't been struggling as much. I think uh, my dice, like I said, is kind of loaded. It seems that every time I throw it, I land up with having to do a knife mod or something like that. But that's only for the days where I'm indecisive or a little muddle-headed, headed, where I'm like going in all different directions. I use that to give me direction. It actually works. As, as silly as it is, it works for me. Just saying. You all be safe out there, especially with them sharp and shinies like these guys. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.